about this time to come up here and worship you, learn about you, Lord. I ask you please be with us through the rest of this week and through the rest of our lives. And just show your work through us, Lord, and all that we do and all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this day, for whatever this day holds. For this week, Lord, Lord, for the kids, we give thanks for the kids. <clears throat> Lord, we ask that you would uh, bless this week, that you would bless us, protect us and guide us with courage, strength, peace, and joy. I know I've been asking for that a lot, but and it sounds like an oxymoron. But we want courage and strength to follow you and only you. That means that we're going to go fight against the world. And so then we also ask for peace and joy. In your precious name we pray this. Amen. I've been realizing lately how I've been asking for these four things and, and how courage and strength, which means I'm about to go fight, but then I ask for peace and joy because I'm going to need it. Oh. Well, if you have one of these papers, you see that there's a lot. I don't apologize for anything. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> And for those of you Bible scholars, if you look at the very last one, that one in and of itself is a lot. Okay, so we're going to go. God bless you. If you're going to sneeze anywhere, sneeze in church, you'll get a whole bunch of God bless you. All right. John 1, 1. <clears throat> You know, sometimes uh, in preparing a sermon, you just have to let the Bible speak for itself. So, in the beginning was the Word, the very beginning, your beginning, this church's beginning. The beginning of beginnings was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Isaiah 40. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the Word of our God stands Forever. John 1, verse 14. This is the important one. This is the reason we're here. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory of as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I was just, I mean, just this week alone, I think I brought it up three to four times. Thank God that I am not the judge. <laughs> because God is full of grace. Jose lacks to give grace a lot. If, if we were to send people to hell based off of what made us angry, heaven would be empty. We'd say, well, you're disqualified because of this. You're disqualified because of this. I just said it a little bit ago. You don't use your blinker. You're going to hell. You lack common sense. You vote for the opposite political party. 
Before you know it, you're, no, you don't even make it. <laughs> you're in a lot of company. You're with everybody. Because nobody would make it. Thank God we don't have that job. The word became flesh. And dwelt among us. We are not worthy of that. The word was in the beginning. And it became flesh. To come down. For us. Ephesians please. Finally my brethren. Brethren. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God we read in the beginning was the word the word was God and we read and the word became flesh Who is the Word? Our Jesus Christ, Yeshua, our Messiah. He was in the beginning. He became flesh. Let's go read John chapter 6. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me I will gives me will come to me and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out for I have come down from heaven not to do my own will but the will of him who sent me this is the will of the father who sent me that of all he has given me I should lose nothing but should raise it up at the last day and this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The word became flesh for you. The word became flesh for all of us, And I think to best understand this and everything we've read up to here, we need to go to Revelation.
I'm going to read it out of my Bible. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now, out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron he himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty god and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords There's jokes and things about if Paul was around, what the letter to the churches today would would read like. And I think that there's a lot of focus from some of the biggest churches on the unchurched. We when people come to church, what should they find? If you come to church for the first time, you should find people that are coming to church for the first time. But you should you should also find very faithful, devoted people that understand that in reading the word of God. The phone. Maybe it's God calling. <laughs> I'd answer it. I'd answer it. Me. He's coming to judge. We have his word. We have the ability to read. We all went through the school system. So we know how to read. Somebody took this book and even translated it into your language so that you can read. We know that this is called the Word of God. We know that Jesus is the Word. We're going to get to how we should be reading, and that's when we get to Psalms 119. I don't know about you guys, but it feels recently like something is at work. Something is at work to make us look bad to get us to become the enemy. We've seen it. We watch it all over TV. The truth is being snuffed.
But I think one of our biggest problems is that we're not ready. We're not prepared. Let's go read 1 Peter. First Peter, and we're going to, chapter 3, starting at verse 13. <clears throat> and who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good can your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly were disobedient, when once the divine longsuffering waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water. There is also an antitype which now saves us. Baptism. Not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. lots of suffering going on. Lots of suffering going on around my life. But it's very small compared to (laughs) anything that uh, the apostles or but the test is still there. My weakness is still being tempted. Um, and I can see it happening to the church. I, I follow so many pastors, and so many pastors are so afraid to speak the truth because somebody might get up and walk out. They are choosing to not offend man rather than please God. We have a big, big task, and that is that we are fighting the world. And we are going to be under attack. And we are not ready. Peter says, be ready. Be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason 
for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. God bless you. I've been struggling with meekness. You know, you guys know that my uh, biggest thing I fight with is my anger. And meekness is that. Meekness is, it's being a humble person. It's being able to protect with maybe a little bit of violence, but then restraining. I was a cop for 11 years. Never been spit on. And then, the week of the fair, a relative spit on me. And I had to practice meekness. What I wanted to practice was the one, two. But I walked away. It's a very weird feeling to have more love and fear of God than of anything on earth. I could have acted out. We have the opportunity to act out. And then read this. The word became flesh to come and save you. For what? So that I could be free. So I could have freedom. Freedom to do whatever I want. Because God is full of grace. We have the option to control ourselves and not make us give us grace for that one act. I heard a term recently, and I (laughs) thought it was funny. Hobby Christians. (laughs) And I wanted to not like it. Because the studies lately have been, be more biblical, be less worldly. And it was a woman pastor that said it. And I said, it's still good, though. (laughs) I don't think you should be a pastor. Actually, I don't think anything. I read you shouldn't be a pastor. I don't think anything. I just follow. Barry used to call it the checkmark. Christians, but I think hobby Christian is actually just catch here. But we check a box, go to church on Sunday, and move on. Are you being transformed? I don't care if you've been coming to this church for 60 years. Is Christ constantly transforming you? Are you finding things? Or are you the perfect Christian? If you're the perfect Christian, this is not the place for you. We here are working on ourselves because we're following the word. And that is our Messiah. Imagine if God behaved like us, hobby Christians. Eh, We'll get to that. I'll get to that when I want to. Oh, I have something more important this weekend. I'm not going to answer prayers. (laughs) 
God is amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Another one of my struggles, as you guys well know, is a lot of the Christian music. A lot of the Christian music says I and me a lot. It's very self-fulfilling right now, and it's about my relationship with God, less worshiping God. And, and, I, <laughs> and normally I'm like, okay, you know, you take out the I, you take out the me, okay, there's nothing to the song, skip it, skip it, skip it. And then I heard a song that was my testimony, but somebody else was singing it. And that about drove me nuts. And it was a man singing about his wife praying for him when he was the biggest sinner. His wife praying for him when he didn't even know God. And then thanking his wife for praying because now he was in a relationship with God. I know that's my story, and I thought it was weird when it was Ken's story, and now some guy I don't even know is singing my testimony song. Then I looked up his bio. He was a major league pitcher who blew out his elbow and then started writing songs. Weird. God is not a hobby God. Actually, God's the only faithful one in this relationship. We break faith. God loved you so much, he sent his son for you. We read the story of Abraham, and Abraham's a jerk. He was going to kill his son. How could he do that? That's his flesh and blood. How could Abraham do that? We couldn't do that, but your God did that for you. Your God loved you so much that he sacrificed his son. You might say, well, his son didn't die. No. But those lashings that he took, the nails that he sat there and watched them pierce through his hands, the thorn, or the crown of thorns that he had put on his head for you. There's a lot going on right now. Um, there's a pastor that said that Christ became sin. No, he didn't. Christ paid your price for your sin. Christ isn't the bad person. We are. Christ came here to save you. God loved you so much that the word became flesh. The word was in the beginning. We complain about our suffering. We complain about all the bad people that surround us in our lives. We complain that some guy we don't even like has a nicer house, a nicer vehicle. Even though his kids are rotten, <laughs> he's an adulterer, 
even though we see everything that this person is doing is bad. But we think, what an injustice. Here we are working on ourselves, trying to be good, and he has nicer stuff than us. This world is unfair. Well, guess what? We have God. And God loved you so much that he gave us the word. And he gave us the word in such a way that he sent him down to be who we get to follow. And because of that, we now have eternal life. He gave you everything. And to those people who don't follow, and to those people who turn their back, he took away everything. Those who won't accept the word, he took away everything. Turn to, or move to, Psalms 119. I think it is the longest psalms in the book. There is a verse or a little segment for each consonant in the Hebrew Bible. All right, you guys ready? So it's going to take us about 15 minutes to read. I'm just kidding. (laughs) This is your homework. This is your homework. I want you to read all of Psalms 119. We are going to read from verse 9. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. O let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. That's all we're reading in here. Your homework is to read all of Psalm 119. The word of God, the law of God needs to be so important to you that you start to live like this. That it is written so deeply on your heart that you don't need somebody to pull you back, that you just pull back. That you don't look for loopholes. You just follow. That you read the word so that you can discern what is good and what is bad. We need to be able to find false teachers and not follow them and save people from not following them. And you need to go find out why. Because it's written in there. That those who follow the false teachers go where the false teacher goes. What would you say earlier, Paula? Ignorance of the law? Know who you're following. If you follow only Christ, guess what? You won't mess up. Peter tells you to be ready. It's 
study this word meekness. Do studying on your own. So I'm giving you homework. This is what I require. This is what God requires, that you have a relationship at home, outside of church. Don't become a hobby Christian. Worship and praise like Psalm 119. Father God Almighty, I give thanks and praise, Lord, for this day. I thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your son. That he made a way for us to have salvation. That he paid the price for the sin that we committed, not him. We don't deserve the grace that you've given us. We beg for mercy, you give us grace. Lord, and I want to lift up right now all the wives who pray for their husbands. Thank you for that. And I ask that the wives continue to pray because us men, we need it. Lord, protect this church. Guide this church. Illuminate your word to this church. Give us strength and courage, Lord, to go out there against the world. But give us peace and joy. We pray this in the name of your son, Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.